Welcome to part 5 of lecture 5 of bulk body aerodynamics. So now let's turn our attention to the rear end of the vehicle. Um, and this is actually sort of where uh, some really important effects come into play. This is all about managing separation. Inevitably, we are going to have some flow separation at the back of any vehicle for any practical shape. And so the process of vehicle design from an aerodynamic perspective is about managing these separations to minimize the overall drag generated. There's all kinds of things we can do. We can taper in the side angles um, of the rear window. Um, we can add radii. We can control sort of the trunk length and the angles of things. We can add a boat tail, which is the sort of tapering of the vehicle at the rear. We can bring the bottom of the vehicle up. Right, there's a large number of geometric parameters at play here. To try to make this more manageable, we're going to fundamentally categorize any vehicle rear end into one of three types, either a square back, fast back, or notch back. Um, and you can kind of look at two examples of each here. Um, square back might look like something like a minivan or the back of an SUV, um, maybe an older SUV. Um, or uh, it could look like something like maybe a more modern SUV or crossover rear end um, where there's a sort of incline that's at more than 30 degrees. A fastback design is going to have a, a sort of smoother rear end. Um, and this is sort of also what you would call a hatchback type of design. Um, and this is where this sort of incline angle is essentially at less than 30 degrees. And then you can have a notchback, which is basically a sedan design. Uh, and this requires sort of a full parameter set because there's additional variables at play. And so we have kind of a squarish one at the top and a modern, more modern curvy one at the bottom. But both of these would be notchbacks. So if we just look at the flow field in terms of velocity vectors at the rear ends for these three different types for a square back. Uh, fast back and notch back, uh, we always get a separation on the rear and we also get a separation on the back window if the angle is greater than about 30 degrees. So when we have that separation, it yields low base pressure and thus additional pressure drag. Basically, the longitudinal vortices and the base pressure govern the drag for these um, Th this rear end. Um, right, the longitudinal vortices create low pressure on the back window and thus also contribute to drag while also producing some upward lift. Um, and the base pressure value is very important to the overall drag. Uh, so we have two ways to reduce the drag. We can reduce the area that the base pressure acts on and or we can increase the base pressure or both. So the inclination angle of this rear window essentially governs the nature of the separation. If the flow separates along the rear window, it's a square back. And if it's attached, it's a fast back. Uh, so we have very low, uh, very low angles are best. Um, so this is sort of like a very mild hatchback, although when this gets to this extreme end, actually then it looks like a square back again, and we actually realize that actually that's not so bad, um, which is this is sort of equivalent to high angles. So we can go to sort of very high angles, which we see uh, once you get to a high enough angle that the drag coefficient saturates, um, say here the vehicle's CD is 0.4, um, with a very uh, sort of sm smooth hatchback, it's maybe uh, something like 0.34. And then we have this region right around 30 degrees where we have a spike in the drag coefficient, um, which uh, is, is sort of to be avoided. Now, interestingly here, um, the change in drag is largely due to changes in lip. And those are due to those longitudinal vortices. So if the angle is large enough, we don't get the vortices at all. Um, and then the drag is no longer a function of angle. Um, the exact critical angle is somewhat geometry dependent, but it's usually around 30 degrees. Both the lift and the drag are going to rise with the sort of strength of these longitudinal vortices or, and when they're present. Um, but if the angle is too high again, then there's no longitudinal vortices present and the lift and the drag drop. And that's why we see this kind of trend here where drag is going up and up and up and then suddenly drops because the longitudinal vortices just disappear.
And the same thing happens with the lift when the velocity of the vortices go away. And we can see here um, what's shown in this little plot on the left here, sorry, on the far right, is uh, pressure coefficient. And what we can see is that we get sort of a reduced pressure um, at the, we get very low, low sort of pressure at the edges here um, due to the presence of the longitudinal vortices. And that's what's going to create that, that, that low base pressure. Sometimes for non-aerodynamic reasons, the inclination ha angle has to be near the critical value. In that case, we can use a rear spoiler to reduce the drag coefficient. Usually the minimum drag happens at about a 15 degree inclination angle, um, as you can see here. And there's really, this is sort of, this, this inclination angle is really the, the single parameter that has the biggest effect on the overall vehicle drag coefficient. For a notchback or a sedan style, there's basically two relevant uh, angles uh, to consider for the geometry. One is the rear window inclination angle, and the other is the angle of the line from the roof edge to the trunk edge. If those angles are equal, then it's a fastback by definition. <laughs> if they're not equal, then it's a notchback. Um, and basically the range of drag coefficients you get is gonna depend on combinations of the two angles. So we see here the, um, the angle that goes from the roof edge to the trunk edge on the horizontal axis, and then the angle of the rear window um, are these different curves or sort of areas of data that we see um, versus drag coefficient. So we see that the trends and the range is, it can kind of be all over the place um, depending on, on exactly the combination that we use here. Moving on, um, if we, to the back of the vehicle, um, and it's sort of the past the window, um, rounding the transition from the sides to the rear, um, perhaps surprisingly, this tends to increase drag. So this is one of the reasons that you don't see sort of huge, you know, round rear ends on, on, on a lot of vehicles. There's to some extent, this is necessary from a pedestrian perspective, uh, protection perspective again, but overall, this is something that, that's actually, uh, the radius gets larger, the drag coefficient tends to, uh, to, to go up. The reason for this drag increase is basically the net effect of two phenomena. Basically, we're getting a higher base pressure, um, but it's more than offset by the strengthening of longitudinal vortices because of this, these curved surfaces. Um, so reducing the vortex-induced drag can be even more critical than raising the base pressure uh, in terms of having to balance those two things. Again, coming back to this idea, if you have to deal with a critical angle, you can use a roof spoiler to force a separation. Um, this basically is a sharp edge that's going to force the flow to separate. Um, this also increases the amount of pressure recovery before the separation by kind of making the flow be have a more favorable pressure gradient on the top surface here, um, because this effectively extends the roof. Um, and you can actually optimize the shape of the spoiler to, to minimize the drag, as you can see here. So in terms of the height of the, the spoiler, there, there's, there's sort of an optimum to get the, the lowest drag. Um, and then in terms of the length, um, basically as we uh, m move it forward, um, there's, there's sort of becomes a very minor effect and at some point we can get a little bit of a drag reduction. This is now looking at the vehicle from the top down view and we can sort of taper the tail. This can reduce the drag if it's not done too aggressively. If the angle of the tapering is too big or the sort of distance uh, to which before we sort of cut this off, um, if the angle is too big or, or, or this is sort of too short, um, the flow is gonna separate before we hit the base. Um, so that increases the effective area on which base pressure is acting. Um, but if we make the taper very long, there's sort of not a whole lot of extra value. So you don't see sort of cars, these like long pointy tails for this reason. Another thing you can do is pull the roof downward at the rear of the car. 
Um, this can reduce some drag if it's done in the right range. But the downside of this is that it reduces the interior volume as well as the height of objects that can be put into the rear of the vehicle. And we can't taper this too much or else the drag starts going up again uh, because of the emergence of longitudinal vortices. So we can only do this a bit where the, we still don't get the longitudinal vortices if we want to get a, a significant benefit. Returning to the uh, C pillars that we mentioned earlier, um, as well as the sort of top of the roof edges, um, rounding these can have a significant impact. Uh, so C is the, is the sort of C pillar um, geometry, and then the D is sort of the, the top of the roof here. And what we can see again with the same sort of strategy here, where the, the unfilled curve is sort of the default shape. Um, so here you can see that uh, this alpha is actually something that's added here to, to make it curvier, um, whereas um, either sort of something can, can be cut away or added um, from the perspective of, of D. And what we see is that if we look at the sort of basic, basic configuration as we go to D2, it doesn't really have any effect. Uh, going to D3 though and rounding this um, reduces the drag by 9% and on the uh, the side uh, sorry this is the uh, yeah looking on the side um, with root D1 uh, and adding this sort of uh, alpha here we can again bring the drag down by 9% uh, we don't see here what happens if you do both it probably doesn't bring it down by 18% probably by something more than 9 but less than 18 